Here's problem 13-2. Three 5-kilogram masses are located at points in the xy plane as shown. What is the magnitude of the resultant force caused by the other two masses on the mass at x equal 0.4, y equals 0? So we have these three masses. Let's call them mass 1, mass 2, and mass 3. This distance here is 0.3 meters, and this distance is 0.4 meters. That would make, by, by this right triangle here, this hypotenuse would be 0.5 meters. Hence, the distance between mass 1 and mass 3 is 0.5 meters. There will be an attractive force between these two masses, mass 1 and mass 2, and this third mass, mass 3 along their line of action. So let's say there's one force called F1 that is along the line of action between mass 1 and mass 3 and there's another force F2 that is along, along the line of action between mass 2 and mass 3 like that. Let's find the magnitude of these two forces. F1 is going to equal G mass 1, mass 3, over the distance between them squared, which is going to be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times mass 1, 5, times mass 3, 5, and the distance between them is 0.5 meters. Square that. And this is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 9 newtons. So that is the magnitude of that force, but we would like to break it up into its two components, one along the negative x direction and the other one in the positive y direction. So if we were to write this force as a vector, we would say force F1 is equal to we have one in the negative x direction, so it's going to be a negative 6.67 times 10 to the minus 9 cosine theta, where theta is this angle here, i, uh, plus 6.67 times 10 to the minus 9 sine theta, j, all this Newton's. So we're, breaking, we're just breaking it up into its two components, cosine and sine, for x and y. In this case, x component being in the negative x direction. All right. Well, it would be nice to know what theta was, but we don't have to know theta because we know the ratio of sides. We can find cosine of theta and sine of theta uh, just as easily because we have ourselves a 3, 4, 5 triangle as we look at it. Here's our three, four, and five are a ratio of sides. So the, as we look at this, we have a negative 6.67 times 10 to the minus 9. The cosine of theta will be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, 4 over 5, so that's going to be 4 fifths i plus 6.67 times 10 to the minus 9. The sine of theta is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, 3 fifths j. So this gives us, so this is equal to a negative 5.34 times 10 to the minus 9 i plus 4.00 times 10 to the minus 9 j newton. So that is our total force F1 as a vector. For F2, that's equal to, at least in magnitude, g mass 2 mass 3 over the distance between them squared. And that's 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times mass 2, 5, times mass 3, 5. Now the distance between them is only 0.4 meters squared. 
and this is equal to 1.04 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons. So as a vector, since it's all in the negative x direction, f2 as a vector is a negative 1.04 times 10 to the minus 8 i newtons. Our total vector force on this mass then is the sum of these two. So our net force is F1 plus F2 in a vector sense. And if we add our I components together, we're going to end up with a negative 10.4 plus 5.34. So that is going to be a negative 15.76 times 10 to the minus 9, or 1.576 times 10 to the minus 8 i. And then our j component will just be the same component we had before, 4.00 times 10 to the minus 9 j, because that's our only component in the y direction. So there's our vector force. We want the magnitude of this force, so we are going to square the components, add them together, and take the square root. So the magnitude of this net force is going to equal negative uh, 15.76, that's squared, plus 4 squared, square root, everything times 10 to the minus 9. And that's going to be equal to 16.3 times 10 to the minus 9, or 1.63 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons. So that's the magnitude of our resultant force on a third mass, 1.63 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons.